Assalamu alaikum. Hello kids. Insha'Allah, today I'm going to tell you another story of Prophet Musa alayhi salam. How he wandered in the desert and how God tested his people. Are you ready children? Now listen carefully. Bismillah. God tests the Israelites. In the last episode, we saw how Prophet Musa alayhi salam took his people across the Red Sea. They now began their journey to the promised land of Canaan. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told them that this was the land of abundance and that the Israelites were to be an example for all mankind to follow. But Canaan was still far away, and the sun grew fierce and hot. Allah, in His mercy, shielded the people from the sun by making clouds follow them wherever they went. As they crossed the desert, it was impossible to find enough food to feed all the people. The people became impatient with hunger and demanded the Prophet to do something. The Prophet prayed to God to help his people. God created a food called men and made it fall from the sky like rain. But the people soon got tired of eating men and they demanded meat. When the Prophet prayed to God, he made quails fly to them. People could easily catch them and cook their meat. Surely these people were blessed to have Allah as their protector. For many days they went without water, and the people soon became thirsty. The Prophet prayed to his Lord again, seeking his mercy. Allah the Merciful heard his prayers, and he asked the Prophet to strike a rock. When he did, water gushed out of the rock from twelve different places. There were twelve tribes among the people, and each one now had their own fountain of cool, clear water. With all these blessings, it is hard to imagine the Israelites disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yet, one by one, they started to complain to the Prophet that they wanted to go back to Egypt. They complained they were tired of men and traveling. They started questioning the Prophet if there really was a land called Canaan after all. The people by now had forgotten that not too long ago they were slaves to the Pharaoh. The Prophet was sad because of their constant demands. After many months of traveling, they finally arrived at the foothills of Mount Sinai. It was here that the Prophet received the first commands from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He asked his people to wait below till he was back from the hill. He put his brother Harun alayhi salam in charge of the people. The Prophet started climbing the mountain. The climb was long and difficult. When he reached the top, he found the same bush burning, the one he had seen when he was here last time. The Lord spoke to him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most merciful, gave Musa alayhi salam stone tablets in which he had special laws written to govern the Israelites. God asked the Prophet to take back the tablets to his people and asked him to follow the laws strictly. The Prophet had been gone for many days now and the people had become impatient. They started taunting Prophet Harun alayhi salam one among them, named Samari, was more inclined towards evil. 
he came forward and said, Prophet Musa has left us. He will not be coming back. How are we going to survive? We should pray to our gods, the idols. Then one among them said, But we don't have any idols with us. Then Samari smiled wickedly and said, We will make one. Prophet Harun salam tried to warn them of the punishments as they started worshipping the idols again. But the people paid no heed and decided to go ahead with their plans. Samari took all the gold his people had with them. He melted the gold in a large bowl. Then they used this to make a big golden calf. They molded the calf so that it was hollow inside. So when the wind blew through the hollow calf, it made strange noises. The Israelites believed that this was their god, and they started worshipping the idol. When Prophet Musa salam returned after 40 days, he was quite taken aback by what he saw. He saw the men and women dancing and worshipping a golden statue. He was very angry and sad now. He threw the tablets on the ground in anger. He grabbed his brother by his hair and said, Did I not tell you to watch the people in my absence? His brother pleaded that he tried to stop them, but they didn't listen to him. They had even threatened to kill him. The Prophet let go of his brother and asked Allah for forgiveness for himself and Harun. Then Samari came forward and said, I took a pinch of sand from your footstep, O Musa, and tossed it into the molten gods as it was shaped. Samari thought this would flatter him. But the Prophet became more angry and said to the Samari, Get out of my sight. And from now on, whenever someone comes to you, you must say, Touch me not. That was his punishment in this life. But Allah had a greater punishment waiting for the Samari and his followers in the next life. The Prophet then destroyed the golden calf. He knew that God was going to punish them for worshipping the idol. So, he chose 70 seniors from each tribe and ordered them, Rush toward Allah and repent for what you did. He then climbed Mount Sinai with those 70 elders. Once they reached the top, the Prophet asked the elders to wait for him, and he walked ahead. There, he started communicating with God. The elders could hear Musa speaking with God, but they could not see him. The Prophet returned after some time, and the elders told him, O oh Musa, we shall never believe in you until we see Allah ourselves. The stubborn demand was rewarded with punishing thunderbolts and an earthquake that killed all of them instantly. The Prophet was very sad now. He wondered what he would say to the children of the Israelites. Those seventy men were the best of the people. So, he turned to God and prayed for forgiveness. Allah heard his prayers and raised the people back to life. In the end, many of the Israelites disobeyed all of Allah's commandments. It was the Prophet who had to suffer greatly because of the ignorance of his people. Allah never allowed them to reach Canaan, and they roamed in the desert for many more years. Prophet Harun salam too suffered greatly. After many years of wandering, one day he died in the desert. The time of death for Musa salam had finally arrived. God sent his angel of death to the Prophet. When the angel came to the Prophet, Musa salam slapped him on the eye. The angel returned to the Lord and said, You sent me to a slave who didn't want to die. Then Allah said, Return to him now. When you meet him, ask him to put his hand on the back of an ox. Tell him that for every hair that comes under his arm, 
he will be granted one year of life. The angel returned to the Prophet and gave him Allah's message. What will happen after that? Death, said the angel. Then let it come now, replied the Prophet. The Prophet then requested Allah to let him die close to the Holy Land, so that he could at least see it from a distance. Allah granted his request, and the Prophet finally could see the promised land from a distance. He breathed, watching the promised land. Prophet Musa alayhi salam, the one to whom Allah spoke directly, met his death with a contented soul and a faithful heart. Hello kids! Did you like the video? Please subscribe to our channel and click that notification bell icon to keep updated on all our videos. Don't forget to share our videos as well. Insha'Allah, in the next episode, I will tell you the story of Prophet Yusha alayhi salam and Prophet Hisqil alayhi salam. That's all for today. Goodbye!